Hey, what is going on everybody? And welcome back to the channel. I uh, hope you're having a nice couple of days for the start of 2019. And I also hope you're ready to, you know, learn a little bit more about our Draw Something Series application right over here on the right and left side. Now, in the very last video, I showed you how to draw out you know, these nice little faces on the left simulator by using our application over here called Draw Something LBTA. If you want to get caught up with all of this code here, make sure to watch the last lesson. In today's video, we are going to move on and create uh, some of these controls all the way at the bottom here. So you see we have undo, clear, and these swatches right here, and also the thickness of our stroke on the left side, or on the right side rather, with these sliders. So this is our thickness here. We can modify it like that. Maybe hit the blue here. And that's what we get. And also undo this that. And the clear will clear the entire canvas. So I would like to show you how to build out a couple of these bottom control components right now. So why don't we head back into our project? And hopefully that sounds good. We have our canvas class all the way at the top of our view controller file. And here is our view controller. So you can see we have an instance of our canvas right here on line 54, and we're adding it into the sub view here, right? I guess the first thing that you probably want to do is to refactor your code into separate files. This is always very helpful if, you know, someone else is looking at your code and finds it incredibly confusing. Uh, a lot of the classes that you create really belongs in a separate file like this. So let's create a new file. And inside of this file called canvas, if I can spell it correctly, canvas.swift, we can just paste in that code here. Now, whenever you are creating a subclass of UI view or UI whatever, you need to import the UI kit uh, framework here that exposes the UI classes like so. Once you do that, you can build your code again. Everything's going to look fine. You can even run your code in the simulator right here and you'll you know, pretty much see your code being uh, reflected inside of the simulator currently. So it's a nice idea to clean up your code so that it's easier to maintain in the future if you have these groups like this. You know, it's just a slight modification that I like to introduce inside of my projects to keep myself sane as well. So we have our controller, we have our views, and the next thing I would like to do is to clean up this view controller file just a little bit and, you know, inside of view load, you have a lot of uh, view add sub view code and, you know, setting up the frame like this. And it turns out you don't exactly need to do this if you don't want to. So for a view controller, it comes with a default white view object. And you can actually override the load view function and provide your own custom view inside of here. So what I mean is you can set the, uh, the view controller's view directly to your canvas if you wanted to do that. And uh, once you do that, you don't need to use the add sub view and you don't need to set the frame on the canvas either. What that's going to allow you to do is to uh, set the view controller's view to be the canvas directly. So here is our canvas object. Okay, so that's a couple of things that you can do to make your code a little bit cleaner. So you don't really need these two lines anymore. And if you wanted to get rid of the background color of white, you know, you can do that as well if you override the initializer for your canvas, but uh, maybe I'll leave that for another lesson. All right, so our code is cleaned up right now, which makes it a lot easier to add some of the controls down here, such as the undo button and also the clear. So hopefully that sounds good. Why don't we start off with the undo button on the bottom left, which is a lot easier to implement than you would probably think here. And, uh, you know, the first thing you need to do is to create an undo button and we will always create things in code because it's a lot straightforward to do this compared to the storyboard, which, you know, involves a lot of dragging and dropping, which becomes a lot, you know, a lot more confusing for a simple lesson like this. And the way you create your controls programmatically is to create a button like this, set it equal to this anonymous closure is what I'll call it with these two braces. Uh, these two parentheses will execute your closure and uh, you know you get your button to be equal to this undo button here now the button has a lot of different things that you can do such as setting the title on it i'm not sure if i should really explain this anymore because i've gone through this 
quite a few times. And this stuff is pretty easy to, uh, you know, just read the code and you pretty much get what's going on. I'm going to set this guy equal to bold system font of 14. Okay, now that is looking quite good. I like where the code is going. And let me try to create the clear button as well. So clear button. And instead of here, we just say clear. Okay, those are my two buttons. And now what I would like to do is to add these two buttons into my view. And again, a lot of different ways to execute the drawing of your application. Uh, one of the easiest ways to lay things out horizontally in iOS is to use something called a stack view. And the stack view can lay things out vertically as well, but by default, it lays it out uh, horizontally. The way we're going to lay it out is to go back into our view to load and perform some more custom drawing here. And uh, what do I mean? Well, let's create our stack view. And the stack view has a constructor called arrange sub views, which takes an array of views. And this is pretty straightforward. We are going to introduce our undo button, hit a comma, and also our clear button. Just like that, pretty simple. Uh, now what I would like to do is to say view to add sub view of our stack view. Now if you try to run this right, you don't really get anything inside of your code until you specify some kind of frame on it. So let me just show you what I mean by saying 0, 0, and uh, 200, and maybe 100. And we'll see what this is going to draw inside of our canvas view. And we are going to execute the code. We see our undo button here and our clear button here. We can draw on our canvas. So that's how you lay out things in iOS. Uh, hopefully this is pretty straightforward. We're just you know setting a simple frame on our stack view up here. Now let's kind of move on to uh, laying this out with a little bit more intelligence here, right? We don't want to deal with these hard-coded values of 200 and 100. And we're going to use auto layout to accomplish this task. Uh, the easiest way of doing this is to start typing out some auto layout anchors, such as the uh, leading anchor, which is the left side. You can constrain it equal to something here. And why don't we just do this manually for now? We're going to constrain it to the views leading anchor is active equals to true. Stack view dot bottom anchor and constrain this to the safe area guide on the bottom. So I'm going to use the safe area guide bottom anchor is active equals to true. And a stack view dot trailing anchor, which is the right side. Uh, we're going to constrain this to the views trailing anchor just like that. And let's just try to run this again. But basically, basically what's going on is we're going to clamp the left of the stack view on the left here, on the right there, and on the bottom right above the bottom safe area guide. Now, you don't see anything inside of your canvas or your view controller because uh, stack view really needs to set this property, translates, uh, whatever this property is called, <laughs> auto resizing mask into constraints, right? A really hard term to actually say while you're recording a video. But once you set this guy actually equal to false, it's going to help you use these auto layout anchors instead of the standard frame and rex. And once you do that, you have your undo button right here and also the clear button down below. Uh, something else that you can do with your stack view is to make the distribution, uh, let's see, dot fill equally. That's going to make your two buttons a size kind of appropriately to each other. And once you have that, you can start drawing your canvas. You can also tap on your clear and also your undo buttons. So not too bad uh, with our code, but as you can see, there's quite a few lines that we just typed out. Uh, you know, you can always clean out your code from view to load, which tends to get quite messy. And I just did a refactor for the stack view layout code, and I called it setup layout. You can obviously call these functions wherever you want, but this name right here seems to make sense to me. Cool. Now let's kind of move on to actually hitting these buttons right here and causing our lines to start to disappear. So for example, if I hit undo right here, you'll see that all my lines will start to disappear from the last line that I drew. So let's say I hit this right here, that, that, and that, that, that. You can start to undo that and also clear the entire canvas. 
So the way we are going to execute uh, some of the actions for hitting the undo and clear buttons down below here and here is to add a target on these buttons. So this is pretty easy by saying add a target and we'll say self uh, pound selector, selector handle undo. And uh, for this, we'll say touch up inside. And for the handle undo function, we have to provide this custom function ourselves with add objective C. We'll make that private as well. And just say handle undo. You'll see that the blue syntax highlighting will come back, which typically means that your code is able to compile. Uh, the next thing you want to do is to make sure this code is being called. So undo lines drawn. And uh, we'll execute this code right now. Inside of the simulator, you'll see this uh, little print statement down here below as I tap on this undo button here. So undo lines drawn. All right, good place for us to be right now. Let me check on the time. We are 12 minutes in and I am now going to hook up this handle undo with our canvas so that we can start undoing these lines here, here, here by tapping that button, right? So I'm going to tap on this and undo some of these lines there, there, and there. So the uh, question is, how do we hook up two components, our view controller and our canvas here? So the way I like to do this is to create a public function, right? So this is a public function that is accessible from you know other components inside of your projects. Uh, the function we'll create is called function, and we are going to just simply say undo. Now undo is going to do a couple of things. We are going to, you know, check out our array of lines here. So let me cut this and put that up here. So lines is constantly being appended to every time we, you know, execute touches begin, we add a new line using this line of code and then we add points onto it. That's kind of why we have this behavior here, here and here. And as sort of the way that we've structured our lines code, we can simply say lines.pop last. That's going to remove the last line from this actual collection. So you can read the documentation there. But basically, we can call that. And then once you, you know, undo the actual line, you can now say set needs display, which is going to execute this draw function again. Uh, you'll see this warning right here that says the result of call to pop last is unused, right? And the way to get that warning to go away is to use this underscore syntax, right? So as you can see, uh, the warning does go away. And as you draw lines right here, you want to hit this undo and you want to execute this function. Uh, the easiest way of doing this now is to go back into your view controller as you hit your undo button right here, undo lines drawn, you want to now actually invoke the canvas.undo. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to execute a chain of events. Hitting the undo button, we'll call the canvas undo. So one, two, three, undo, 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 and that line will go away. Uh, the next thing you probably want to do is to now talk about how you actually clear everything inside of your canvas. And as you can probably tell, this is pretty similar to what we've done right here. Instead of calling canvas undo, we will invoke a, another function here and, uh, you know, call it clear. Hopefully this makes sense. And lines has a, another function called remove all removes all elements from your collection. Hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory, right? You know, a lot of times when I'm reading the documentation, Sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't. So, you know, make sure to read it to at least give it a chance. Uh, let's kind of go on and go to view controller. Uh, we are going to add a function to the clear button. So every time I hit the clear, right, I want to clear the entire canvas. Uh, we're now going to say button dot add target of self. Let's see, pound selector, you know, pretty simple stuff here. And handle clear dot touch up inside right here. You know, I actually think that writing the code out is much easier than dragging the uh, storyboard IP outlets and IP actions, right? This is just a lot easier. I don't really know why people <laughs> really fall in love with the storyboard. Uh, now the handle clear is what we need to implement. Let's say a clear. We are going to call canvas, uh, canvas, which is a really hard word to type for some reason. We're going to now uh, click on the clear button as we draw lines onto our canvas. 
Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So hit the undo, one, two, three, and clear. We'll clear the entire canvas. So what exactly is happening with our clear button, right? You can see as we draw, all those lines disappear. So currently we have a bug inside of uh, the clear. We really need to call set needs display, which will force the UI view subclass to uh, actually invoke the draw function again. And you know, you just, <coughs> just got to make sure that your functions are being called properly. And once you have that, one, two, three, four, five, six, hit the clear, all of those lines will now go away. And uh, you know, that's kind of where our application is at right now. Uh, one question that you might be having is why exactly do we want to, you know, make these functions of undo and clear when instead of your view controller, whenever you are, you know, hitting the undo right here, you know, undo and handle the clear, you might be asking, well, why don't we just simply call something like canvas dot lines dot remove all and then also say canvas dot set needs display so this is perfectly fine what this means is we're pretty much calling and invoking the functionality that belongs to our canvas from an external class such as view controller and doing this is okay there's nothing technically wrong with this right you know this code is pretty much invoked inside of the undo function or the clear function, you know, whatever the logic needs to be. And the reason why we make these functions like undo and clear inside of the canvas is to encourage this idea of encapsulation for your components inside of your project. And encapsulation makes sure that the function of your classes, such as canvas, is able to be responsible for exactly what it needs to do. And in other words, we have undo and clear, which clearly, you know, no pun intended, clearly belongs on the canvas object. The view controller really doesn't need to, you know, have that functionality embedded inside of this view controller class. Just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense from an object oriented programming uh, perspective. And the other thing that is going to help you out a lot is to implement the idea of private variables and you know private functions. So the idea here is the canvas is going to only be able to access your lines. And so the idea here is that uh, external classes such as view controller or any other controller, it really shouldn't have access to the underlying components of your canvas objects, such as the lines and the stroke width and the stroke color the canvas is going to manage all that for you. Now, the biggest advantage to doing things this way and encouraging encapsulation is whenever you are, you know, maintaining your code and adding new features to your app, uh, it's going to be a lot easier if nothing is accessible from, you know, external classes such as the view controller. You want to make sure that everything is private inside of your canvas. Your code overall is going to be much easier to read in the long run. Alrighty, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for today's lesson. If you are interested in downloading any of the source code that you saw in today's lesson, uh, make sure to head it down to the description below. There's going to be a link that allows you to download all of the source code that you saw in today's lesson. And that's going to be it for me today. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye, guys.